me ask me, Kevin Smith, Silent Bob, and all those terrible Jane Silent Bob type pictures, man. You're listening to Drop the Mic, the only podcast that I listen to that I'm not a part of. Every podcast I listen to, I usually talk on it, but not fucking Drop the Mic. That's where I'm like, let me hear what the boys have to say. And now, we drop the mic. Welcome to Big Taters. My name is Sarah. Can I start you guys off with an order of our Freedom Tots? We got all these people, all our friends. They're just sitting around trying to figure out what to do, trying to figure out how to make something. I thought you were avoiding me. Why would you think that? Because I stole your role. Come on, you lady. I work so hard. Every week it's a new class, a new audition. Hopefully you'll see something in me. I know I'd be great for this. We'll be in touch. Welcome back to our humble San Diego podcast. We are your hosts, Wesley Swanson and Ryan Jimenez. Together, we are the Drop the Mic podcast. This is episode 292, A Transformative Moment, where we will be discussing the body horror classic from 2014. That's right, you guessed it, Starry Eyes. For this week, we have a very special guest on the show, none other than Miss Emma Duenas, has tapped in to help us explore this dark and brooding picture. How are you? And welcome back. Hello. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, before we get started, uh, let's get warmed up with some of our usual intro segments, shall we? And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. All right, pop culture news. What do you have for us? Uh, kick it off, Ryan. <clears throat> yeah, so according to Deadline... Twisters, the upcoming sequel to 1996's Twister, is looking for directors as Universal and Amblin hope for a spring start. Frank Marshall is to produce the upcoming sequel, and it's said that Steven Spielberg was so impressed by the script written by um, the Revenant writer Mark L. Smith that the sequel is being fast-tracked. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Wow. A Twister sequel, huh? Yeah, uh, apparently, um, from what I was reading... Uh, obviously they're being super quiet on the script, but from what I was reading, it's going to be, um, Helen Hunt, her daughter is apparently taking the mantle of like storm chaser. What? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I was, I'm a fan of the first one. Especially if they, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring back Helen Hunt. So, and if Spielberg liked it, it has to be good. Also that writer is really good. So. Oh yeah, he is. So in some news that kind of broke today. Um, the Safdie Brothers' upcoming film starring Adam, Adam Sandler is reportedly set in the world of high-end card collecting, and it's currently in development for Netflix. And that's with uh, Adam Sandler again? Yeah. Crazy all these big directors and, and actors are going to Netflix. Did you guys like Uncut Gems? Of course. Yeah, it was pretty trippy. It's hard to watch, Anxi- but it, it was good. Anxiety. Yeah. I thought I was going to have a stroke. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so in, uh, in some news regarding old men yelling at the sky, Alan Moore has once again spoken out about his HBO adaptation of his graphic, graphic novel series, The Watchmen. Um, in an interview with GQ, Moore stated, I explained that I had disowned the work in question, and partly that was because the film industry and comic industry seemed to have created things that had nothing to do with my work. He went on to say they think that it was a dark, gritty, dystopian superhero franchise that was something to do with white super racism. Thoughts on Alan Moore and what he had to say? Well, I mean, he's always been outspoken about him not watching the adaptations. No, Alan Moore has been a turd for his whole life. 
And yeah, Watchmen's dope, and and you know it's probably one of the greatest books of the hundred greatest books of our time. But um, I don't know, man. I think that you would want people to to, con- to continue to to add on to the stories you've made, and especially how they what they did with Watchmen, right? Like it was just super super well received and won a whole bunch of awards and i'm surprised they didn't make a a sequel series well i was not really a fan or into watchmen before the hbo series which i thought was great amazing Mm -hmm. um you know got a fan out of me so i mean i don't know if i were him i would be humbled to that other people want to like you said they want to continue this you know and just add on to it just because yeah. people change it doesn't mean anything negative you know people are taking your ideas that were obviously great and yeah. you know just adding on to to that making it yeah. better you know it's not like they're like making it like it's like shit and it's like you know they're terrible movies or terrible series like it was everything they, they've done with Watchmen has been even the um i don't know if you checked it out if you guys have checked it out but like the animated series like the to go with the comic was awesome too like super well done so yeah he just needs to stop already stop being an old man grumpy old man <laughs> yeah In my last little bit of news um keeping the news going on about people who need to uh calm down and go outside and touch grass grass and enjoy some life a petition was started by a group of so-called Halloween fans who want Universal and Blumhouse to reshoot Halloween Ends. And if you guys would like to hear your statement what? on the movie, I could read it to you. Would you guys like that? Sure. Yes. Halloween Ends was not a film that the fans wanted. This was an origin story. The Corey story. We deserve a movie worthy of Michael Myers and the Halloween franchise. We love this franchise wholeheartedly, and the vision of Halloween move, the vision of this Halloween movie left us sad, mad, disappointed, and infuriated. Please give us a movie that shows us that Halloween, what Halloween is really about. Our apex predator, the king of slasher movies, Michael Myers. This movie gave us a weak, <laughs> pathetic Michael who needed his mask to survive. This isn't our Michael Myers. Our killer is strong, relentless, and unstoppable. Please write this wrong. We beg of you. I'm pretty sure those are the same people that are, what's it called, sexualizing Evan Peters and fucking... (laughs) (laughs) In Dahmer? Dahmer. (laughs) But yeah, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think? I mean, the listeners already, already know what me and Wes thought of the movie. What did you think about it, Emma? Uh, if you've seen it i i yeah i saw it i i liked it i i'm curious as what do they what do they want like what the title is literally halloween ends (laughs) so i'm just curious as like what is it that they want what is it that the fans want you know i'm a fan and I, i i thought it was didn't yeah i thought i I went in with no expectations of like this has to happen, you know. You can't do that. I don't yeah, know. No, I exactly. feel like they need to, like you said, go outside and like take a fucking walk. I don't know. I was just gonna say, I, I think the the big problem that a lot of these fans are having is that Michael's not in it as much. And uh, I mean, you know, of course I understand, but also like we've said on this show before the filmmakers told us that this was this third installment was going to be way different and we already got our michael movie in halloween kills so why would they tread that again you know what i'm saying yeah no exactly they gave us one of the most ruthless michael we've ever seen on screen in, in in kills and they fucking it seemed like people complained about that a little bit and well, which what I I guess like it, you know, wanted because it wasn't a perfect movie, but this comes out and they kind of decide to flip everything on the script and now people want to like I don't even know how many signatures this got has gotten. I should have checked. I'm pretty sure it's in the thousands because people are fucking idiots. Of course, 
Yeah, because uh, I read that article a couple of days ago, and it, they said that it was clearing, or almost clearing a thousand, or over a thousand, something like that. Yeah, that's all I got for for my news. Other than um, going back to what I I said a couple of weeks ago, getting like a little bit more serious. Fucking November eighth is election day across the country. Please, please, please go and vote. You can visit your county's uh website and it gives you all the information about about registering to vote i think in california you have 15 days um before november 8th to 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 fully register so you can get your vote in and um yeah please if you're not going to vote for yourself go out and vote for all the women and and lgbtq plus people in your life because they're fucking about to get everything taken away from the next couple years and it's going to be a pain in the fucking ass to get that shit back. Aren't you able to register the day of at I think your you polling for, place? Um, at your polling place, yeah. yeah. People <laughs> should go uh, out and take a walk and walk to their fucking polling place. Yes. Please, please do. Yeah, so. and do this, it. This election is crucial. It's free. Uh, you get a free sticker afterwards. Like, I don't Dude, that's get, the best like, feeling. That's the best part. For the news, um, I'll be stepping in for, for James... Um, who couldn't be with us again this week, but he did send us uh, some recommendations and a couple news bits. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, deliver those for him. So first up, Charlie Cox has been training with an MMA fighter to be better prepared for his 18 episodes of Daredevil Born Again. Uh, the series set to begin filming early 2023 and release for Marvel Phase 5 in 2024. Any thoughts on this? Um, hurry up because I need to see that the that Daredevil ass and those tight ass. Same. <laughs> um, no, dude, I'm excited for it. Um, 18 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. Uh, I don't remember how many episodes were in the other Daredevil um, seasons, but 18 seems like a lot. But they're probably I'm sure like that... 10 or 13. I think that's the usual. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure that. Uh, He's gonna fucking rock it like he did the the, the, the last time he, he donned the the cowl. So after the first season of Daredevil, he got a lot of like um, you know people wanted him in, in movies and TV shows and stuff. So he um, he auditioned for something and I, fuck, it was something big. He didn't obviously get it, but the but I was reading that he didn't get it and they were having a hard time with him during the audition because he couldn't look them in the eye because he trained himself so well to like stare off like he was blind that during that audition he wasn't looking in anyone's eyes and like he was kind of like looking off into the distance so that's how that's how well he acted in in daredevil he probably doesn't yeah he didn't even realize he was doing it Mm mm-hmm all right, moving on. Uh, Man of Steel 2 is still in the works right now at Warner Brothers. Uh, the studio is currently searching for its writer, and Cavill is set to return as Superman nine years after the first Man of Steel. Why? <laughs> Who's asking for this? Like, Cavill can just move on. Doesn't he have that show on Netflix? No one's um, asking for Superman. Uh, all this shit got cut from WB, like we've been talking about, and, and, and Warner Brothers and, and DC, and they're like axing everything, and then they're 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 bringing this back, which is um, obviously Emma doesn't want to see another Superman, but <laughs> um, I don't, I wouldn't mind it. Like I loved him as Superman. Um, I think he did it very well. Um, it's crazy that it's going to like take place nine years after the first one, and I wonder if they're kind of just going to retcon everything that happened in between like justice league and everything um but yeah that's wild is amy adams coming back i'm sure she will be she has to be okay then maybe (laughs) i'll I'll put it on my maybe list (laughs) all right uh moving on the flash already has a sequel script completely finished and awaiting the box office results for the uh june 2023 release (sighs) wait is the movie made well, this the Flashpoint is made, but because of the Ezra Miller, okay, him, him getting in uh-huh. trouble, uh, which I guess they're still going to release it. They have another follow up um, ready, but they're waiting to see how people um, react to this one coming out. The follow up is with him too, depending. But yeah, I think that that's the plan. Is oh, he, they haven't he, made it yet. He's yeah, it's just written. Oh, okay, gotcha. 
but he's recently did like this thing where he came out and apologized and they're trying to sweep everything under the rug it seems like but mm. yeah that's what they're doing but it's kind of wild dude, because they're they're moving forward again they're doing all this wild shit and then now supposedly he's getting his own a second movie with all the shit he's done and they still haven't given us whatsoever to do with ray fisher's cyborg and i know it has a lot to do with fucking that shithead joss whedon but like he does that and then you know um ezra miller they do that so like what are they thinking of, of giving them that movie the sequel to their movie that hasn't even come out yet and then ray Fisher, ray fisher's cyborg just kind of gets acts because of of him basically standing up for people yeah it's not fair they were ezra ezra miller's like they can be facing like 23 years in in prison yeah but he's pleading not guilty or something like that yeah it's, there's all the dc shit's kind of getting tiring tiring other than fucking batman don't stop giving me batman <laughs> please <laughs> black adam hits theaters this weekend but early critics reviews I've given it a 44% on Rotten and a fan score of 89. Many fans calling it the saving grace for DC. I just feel like he he has a huge fan base. People just love him. Yeah, no, that movie's going to make a billion dollars. <laughs> like, it's The Rock. He's so annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm pro- I'll probably go and see it this, like, this weekend just because... But it's kind of wild. It's coming out middle of October with all these other Halloween movies out. I'm sure if it would have waited a, a little bit more, it would have made more money. And it's probably not going to make a, that much more money because Black Panther comes out in like three, four weeks. It comes out the first week of November, I think. I heard there's, I heard it's, there's crazy end credits and this ends crazy. So what I heard from somebody was that it, it's a movie that feels like the shitty superhero movies like green lantern as opposed to the good ones if that means anything to anybody out there that means a lot (laughs) (laughs) because you want it to feel like shazam or or wonder woman or something on along that lines you don't want shitty green green lantern you don't want it to be uh x-men origins wolverine (laughs) deep cut deep cut Uh, (laughs) moving on nope is heading to peacock november 18th 2022 for anybody who hasn't seen it yet it's worth it check it out um and then some more halloween news uh or related i should say david gordon green's next project will indeed uh, indeed be revisiting the og exorcist film with another planned trilogy the first film is said in said trilogy will be starting production very soon with a planned uh slated date of october 13th 2023 which is very close i did i did see this uh earlier this week or whenever it was announced at first, I was like, come on. But then, like, no one has really done anything. Well, the, the series. Well, the show, which was good. Uh-huh. I really liked it. I enjoyed that. But then nothing happened. Like, I think they had, like, two, three seasons. And then it got canceled. Yeah, it, it, it fell off. And they have uh, Ellen uh, Burstyn coming back, who played Chris, uh, Reagan's mom, is coming back uh, to be in this first one, which is pretty exciting. And hopefully they can do it just- justice. And now it's time for the weekly recommendations. Yeah, so uh, a couple of days ago, I finally I bought, bought it um, on digital, Clerks 3. Um, obviously written and directed by the man, Kevin Smith. Starring basically the whole the whole cast from the last the last two. Um, honestly, dude, uh, after a couple of days sitting on it, I think it's up there with one of his best. It's just like, <laughs> and I know he pulled a lot from his own his own experience. Um, but yeah, man, it just the message and just the tone and everything about it, man, it just kind of it hit me hard. And at the end of the movie, like I told you off air, I was tears were streaming down my face and it, it hit in on all the for all the good reasons like it just it was a very very good way to kind of wrap up that that those movies and that trilogy 
Brian O'Halloran Halloran and, and Jeff Anderson, they're fucking awesome in it. If you feel like they're fucking best like legitimately best friends, it's how well they are in the movie. Uh, and then for my next rec, I checked out a couple episodes of the Shudder's 101 Scariest Movie Moments of All Time. Um, I liked it. I, I think it's only, it has like maybe six episodes so far. I think they're like in the 30s right now. Um, if you love horror and, and, and that genre, anything to do with that genre, it's essential. And I think a must, especially during the season we're in right now, to, to check it out. And then check out Shudder too, because... It's very underrated as a streaming service. I don't know if you guys have checked it out yet. Yes. Uh, that was on my, my list as well. So watch it. It's pretty good. They just released the episode uh, seven. Emma, did you have anything for recommendations? Um, yeah. Uh, so I watched The Watcher on Netflix. Um, I watched it all in one night. <laughs> it's pretty good. Was the ending as bad as everyone's saying it is? It left you wanting more, but mm-hmm. it, it's based on a true, it's based on true events, like a true story. Yeah, that story is wild. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I had never heard of this. Um, so um, I think uh, if, to me, it, it left me with questions, you know, and I know some people don't like that, but mm-hmm. just the whole, the whole series, like, I'm just like, what? <laughs> it, you know, it. You thought that you had to figure it out, and it's kind of um, in in the show. You know, the the main couple they're trying to figure out this mystery, and it's kind of like, you know, you you get really invested in that, um, and you think you have it figured out, but then in the end, I feel like I just you know uh, was left with more questions than anything, but. Uh, I liked it. I I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it. Like everybody should watch it. Naomi, you know, she was great. How many episodes is it? Mm, I think it was like seven. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, and then Mia Farrow is in it. Like she makes a cameo. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so I was just like, wait, what? Uh, so um, yeah, so I recommend The Watcher, and then also because of Mia Farrow, I recommend Rosemary's Baby, uh, which is great. Um, and then also, I'll just recommend Doctor Sleep because uh, it's a really great movie, and I hope that um, you know, other people watch it. <laughs> For James, he wanted me to wreck Riverdale uh, because I guess him and Alyssa have been watching it for the past month, and he unexpectedly got hooked. I just wanted to say congratulations to uh, one of our co-hosts, James Warney. Because he just got married. I don't think we've announced that on the show yet. And that's why he probably hasn't been on for a couple weeks. Uh, he's busy. and Being married. Obligations. Priorities. You know? You know what I'm saying, Ryan? No? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sandy's not in the room for me to say this, so I can say it, but that's what happened. <laughs> 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 no, fucking, that's good shit, dude. Can you like... Uh, like you said, congratulations to, to both of them. That's awesome. And yeah, no, Riverdale is, I, I think I've watched the first season and that shit fucking, after one episode, that shit fucking sucks you in. Well, you know why? Because our buddy Ryan here is a big Skeet Ulrich fan. Oh, oh he's God, in there? Fucking, yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he <laughs> is. <laughs> you know what? One of our friends recommended that show, like a couple, like when it first came out or something. And it's connected to uh, the new Sabrina. Oh. Yeah, now it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it gets it gets wild. Uh, she said the, the same thing was, you said, Ryan, that she, like, saw a couple episodes, and then she was like, I'm so invested. Like, I have to keep watching. Like, it, it sucked me in. Yeah, no, it, it does. It totally does that. The first, like I said, the first season's good, and then from there on, it gets fucking bonkers off the wall. But How yeah, many it, seasons it, it, is it? Oh, man. It's like four? Five? Good show to, to binge if you need something to binge. I've also been watching Mike Flanagan's new newest series on Netflix, uh, The Midnight Club, which is awesome. It, it follows kind of the layout of Are You Afraid of the Dark with a huge, huge twist. I can't give a, uh, or I don't want to give away too much about its premise, but amazing, amazing show if you like Mike Flanagan's stuff, who also did uh, Doctor Sleep and oculus and uh, the haunting of blind manor and all that great stuff 
And now for the movie focus of the week. Emma, as I was saying, wanted to come on the show uh, to be a part of our spooky season. And so we settled on the movie Starry Eyes because I believe this to be one of her favorite films. It's a <clears throat> kind of an underground horror film that she's always, like since it came out, she's never stopped talking about it. Um, and that's why we're going to talk about it tonight a little bit. So we're talking about Starry Eyes. It's unrated. It's from 2014. It's a body horror film to the fullest. It runs at one hour and 38 minutes and it's got a 74 on Rotten. Written and directed by Dennis uh, Widmeyer and Kevin Kolosh, uh, starring Alex Esso as Sarah, uh, Noah Segan as Danny, uh, Fabian Therese as Aaron, um, and Amanda Fuller as Tracy. The film spins a tale of a young, seemingly ordinary young woman, uh, Sarah, as she tries to make make it within the world of cutthroat show business as she is finally noticed by a production studio she is promised the world given she follows their every demand how far would you go to make your dreams come true starry eyes is an indie film that was funded mostly through a kickstarter campaign which is super impressive and had its premiere at the south by southwest film festival on march 8th 2014 with the festival even claiming the film to be amongst the best to debut that year shot on location in the la area with only 18 days to complete its production, Starry Eyes is an impressive satirical jab at Hollywood show business, and although it is far from the first to touch on this subject, it is one of the most unique takes you may ever come across. The film boldly presents the Hollywood elite as a satanic cult, uh, Astraeus Pictures, who prey upon a vulnerable young woman promising her high caliber work beauty and power at the expense of her body and soul ultimately rebirthing sarah after she is compliant to their sexual demands as well as sacrificing her friends in the process our lead alex esso as sarah walker is nothing short of brilliant showcasing the pressures of being an, an aspiring actor and the depths one could go to achieve their goals the raw emotion and physicality she brings to the screen is mesmerizing especially when you take into consideration that alex herself was largely an unknown actor uh, when she hopped aboard this project. Esso would be, go on to develop a long-lasting friendship with horror-centric film series creator Mike Flanagan, starring in Doctor Sleep, The Haunting of Bly Manor, and Midnight Mass so far. The film may leave certain people confused as it plays with tension and character development, creating a bit of a slow burn up until its third act, where the film quickly kicks off into a Cronenbergian uh, slaughter fest, with David Lynch style peppered in. It goes without saying that Starry Eyes might not be it for everyone, but it certainly has longevity and staying power, with a beautiful score from Jonathan Snipes and equally impressive cinematography by one Adam Bricker, who really brings Los Angeles alive in ways we hadn't seen before. It's not hard to see why writer-slash-director team Dennis Widmeyer and Kevin Kolosh would, uh, were given the opportunity to re remake Stephen King's Pet Cemetery in 2019, which was a box office smash, despite critics and fans being divisive about that new take. If you haven't experienced the existential dread that is Starry Eyes, we strongly recommend checking it out. Streaming on demand now via the Pluto TV app. Four out of five taters. Thank you. So, Emma, um, please share with us why 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 did you pick this movie, or why was it on the list, and what does it mean to you as a woman? Uh, well, I really do think that not a lot of people know about this film. Um. Yeah, I randomly, well, I remember when it first came out, I think it was streaming on Netflix, and I randomly came across it, and it had just came out maybe a year or so, um, maybe 2016 or so, uh, yeah, and I was like, what the heck is this? Obviously, the if you haven't seen the cover art, it's pretty gnarly, mm -hmm. um, so that alone, the cover art, which the poster, I say it's like one of my favorites that I've seen and I think it's on the soundtrack too but yeah so when I saw the movie 
obviously the whole, you know, sexually explicit stuff where, you know, she, they try to take advantage of her, the, her boss and all that. Obviously that's something that I'm so against, but then at the same time, it's like, she, she's just like, fuck it and gives in. Like how many times does someone just want to be like, I don't care about anybody. I'm just going to go out there and do whatever it takes to get whatever I want. Like, I know people have thought about that, you know, mm -hmm. at one point in your life, you're like, I don't care about anybody. I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want and do whatever it takes to get it. But obviously <laughs> having morals and, you know, uh, being, you know, of sane mind, we don't make those choices and we are left behind with like the what if, um, is it worth it? I think in the film she says, is it worth it? You know, several times, like, is it worth it? Um, if I would have done that would have been worth it, you know? Uh, she does say that several times throughout the film. Um, and eventually she does do it. And to her, I feel like it was worth it, you know? Yeah, I just find it very, a little satisfying that she does, you know, get what she wants, but also uh, very, it's very troubling, you know, what she has to go through. Um, and she's like literally dying from the inside out. She has to go through this process. Like, what does it take? It literally takes her body like decaying for her to, uh, you know, her end goal. Well, um, I don't know if I'm, if this is like, if I'm reading the film wrong, but I feel like her friends not being the proper kind of support system that she really needed ended up pushing her to do what she does. I feel like the friends are supposed to embody also what LA is. So if you notice, there's not much in the movie that lets you know that they're in LA. Mm -hmm. Just the Hollywood sign and obviously that people, that she says that they're in LA and they're trying to make it, they're aspiring actors. But I feel like they do a really good job of sh in like showing you like the quote unquote vibe that is LA with the people in the film. And uh, it's that fucking shitty ass group of friends. Mm -hmm. um, the one, her roommate obviously is trying to is quote unquote on her side but i feel like she thinks she means well but she really doesn't yeah i mean she was better than the rest of better them. but she always would just whatever uh sarah would tell her in confidence she would just turn around and tell those other yeah. Yeah. friends you know exactly which is toxic still yeah i agree with you I agree with you it's too. A, it's yeah. a very, very uh, <laughs> L.A. hipster vibe. But 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 what's cool is that Sarah Sarah's character never really blends in with them. You can tell that she doesn't belong in a certain way. You know what I mean? And yeah, style like uh, aesthetically. I mean, is they they frame the shots and she very much feels like the black sheep or that she doesn't belong with them and. I feel like that comes into play with her character later where she's just like, you know, fuck it. Like, what do I have to lose at this point? I have nothing. She loses her real, like, uh, date to, like her daytime job. Um, and she ends up coming back to the Astraeus pictures and, and gives in to what they want. It's a very um, haunting take on, on, on that, that, that age old you know, like Emma was talking about, like, you know, what would you do to, to reach your goal, your ultimate goal? And some people go for it and some people don't. And, and this, this is a very dark and twisted way of showing um, that some people do go for it. And, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And that's my big takeaway from the movie is that, um, yeah, it's like, obviously shit like this, like, I hope it's not happening. <laughs> It um, does like, happen, so this, you know. No, no, I'm saying happen. like like the the whole satanic shit. Oh like yeah, that. Um, but I feel like that happens um, too. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past <laughs> Fuck. Um, but the whole you know going for it story, you know, you go for it and you 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 get that that reach that goal, and um, 
this movie shows you if you go for it what it costs to go for that goal right and <clears throat> um i think it's a very uh, interesting way to tell that type of story because obviously you know you can in life we go for things and some people go for things and they leave people behind they leave loved ones behind they end relationships with friends and lovers and and they get what they want or on the flip side of it they do all that and they don't get what they want or they get what they want like she did and um it costed her her entire life but it's what she wanted but um yeah dude i think the the cinematography and the 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 score really 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 fucking sets the tone on on the entire movie i think the 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 score throughout the film has a lot to do with at least this is my the way i you know experienced it it's really connected with her sarah's emotions and just how she's perceiving the world like she has so much anxiety and she needs that release which that release happens to be self-harm you know she tears out her hair um and then on the other uh, side she is either like extreme like that or then everything's muted you know like if you notice like the music is like can be really high pitch and then it's like very low mm -hmm. um so i think it's connected with her emotions um she has a really hard time like expressing herself or being in social situations which is also you know pretty relatable but it's how if you have you know the coping mechanisms to go through those situations and i i don't think i think that she just stops herself you know she's so afraid of how she's going to come across or, or all of that, that her anxiety is just so much. And then finally, when someone sees her in that vulnerable position, like they're, you know, saying, show me, like, why do you do this? You know, and I don't think that anybody has even, probably throughout her life, even asked her, you know, like, are you okay? <laughs> you know, type of thing. And she even says, I, like, I don't have any family. So you can see right there, like, no one fucking gives a shit about her. So, yeah, of course she's going to do whatever she wants, whatever she can to get what she wants. Um, it just, everything, t you know, aligns for her. And then, like Ryan was saying, uh, it costs you, you know, your family, your lovers and all of that, which she herself literally took, you know, cut them out of her life you know killed those people the people that she didn't even eventually she realized that mean nothing to her and then the ending i don't know are we gonna just talk about okay so the ending um i had forgotten about the ending when she's in the bed you know she's like reborn and she's in the bed and then the roommate is still alive but then she takes care of the roommate and the roommate dies and i'm just like oh i forgot about that you know when i rewatched it i don't know i didn't i don't know if the roommate deserved that deserved that yeah yeah that's definitely part of the story you know you gotta she had to sacrifice everything and even that one friend that did kind of care for her you know they got in the fights throughout the movie but it was kind of you know she felt bad so she apologized the friend and and yeah like you said at the end she kind of she offed her and it's what she had to do to, to get to her final goal if she wanted it. And the w the way that kill is set up is pretty is pretty messed up. Because you're like, oh, are they gonna like it's it's gonna be fine? But also, she's a witness. Yeah, I, I, that scene. I definitely the, my first watch. I felt like she was kind of gonna, you know, take her under her wing because she was one of the only ones to kind of be not a shitty friend. And okay to her yeah she kind of lures her into that bed with her telling her you know i'm going away and you have to say goodbye to me also another big thing that makes this movie so great is the all the special effects are clearly practical so it's gonna it's gonna age well or it has aged well um getting... she looks fucked up <laughs> yeah yeah that that final those final scenes where she's like before she gets reborn and they do that, the occult does that, that 
whatever they do to her, she's fucking tore up. Like, she yeah. looks like shit. I read that, you know that scene when she's in the bathroom and she throws up the maggots in the tub? That it was real? Yeah, that she had... Not that all the maggots... Well, yeah, the maggots were real, obviously. But that when she pulls out that one last maggot out of her mouth, that it was like a real maggot in her mouth. Wow. Like, she put it in her mouth for reals. And I, I don't know if you guys picked up on it. I think Wes kind of touched on it a little bit in your intro but i kind of felt like you know when it was kind of like or it felt like um with alex iso so um like you were kind of seeing sort of real emotions on on screen because she was a newer actress i think that kind of helped a lot with it, making it believable and in 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 the realness that you feel throughout the movie and her just her the way she is yeah the struggle the struggle yeah right? yeah no yeah that's totally uh that's totally true it comes off um on film very very well too when she's going to the, all the auditions and her the awkwardness and even when she does really well um for astraeus pictures she does that first audition and you think that she's killing it because she is and they still dismiss her and they're like all right we've seen enough thank you and then she's goes to the bathroom and has the fit and then one of those producers happens to be in the bathroom and hears her have the fit and that she pulls her hair out and all this and so that's what gets her to be called back um mm -hmm. but watching her be like like she was killing that dialogue and then them just to write her off like that was it's pretty heart-wrenching and then they're like oh like you're like you're mentally unstable okay yeah yeah we can use you you know it sucks <laughs> but it is <laughs> that's a real thing well i think that i think that's their thing like that they pry on people like that and, and you know the cult will say that's a person that's more susceptible, susceptible yeah. yeah to you know get them to do what we want them to do and I feel like because she was her audition was her yeah it was pretty good, um, but the guy you know that was there uh, watching the uh, you know rating the auditions I don't even know what you call that guy, <laughs> um, he said like oh you'll just be lost in a sea of you know the thousands the thousands of girls yeah. this whole. This whole film also has, you know, this really sad side to it that this does happen. You know, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really fucked up that, you know, all of these aspiring actors get treated like shit, you know. Or, <clears throat> as we know, you know, things have happened, come to light recently in the last couple years. Um, that producers or you know people out there in the industry are fucking pieces of shit mm -hmm. yeah and that i feel like that's what this movie is doing obviously in a heightened sense of reality but it's saying that these actors whether it be men women what have you they have to give up their body where the sh show business uses them as a vessel and that's what this movie is trying to say is like you have to be reborn and have this whoever mold you into what they want so it's like they've taken her innocence away she's no longer in control of what she does anymore can i ask you a question emma sure uh, obviously since me and west can't speak on it because you know the woman is a main the main character um did it make it did that was the film um a little bit more scarier for you seeing her do do what she does and having to to um make that decision and just the way she was she was treated throughout the movie no not scary for me uh it, it just it makes me angry you know it mm -hmm. it gives me that anger um mm -hmm. but what's scary to me is that uh you know girls or women men also i'm sure like people do they go through that they go they do they choose to go back to the producer's office and do that and then 
they're like, okay, yeah, here, you get what you want because you fucking suck my dick, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's scary to me that people actually do that and they think that that's going to solve their problems, you know? And I just want to be like, no, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, to me, it, it wasn't scary. It, it kind of gives me more anger than anything. Um it, it's scary that, you know, how sh alone she is and how uh, she just ends up with nothing. At, at least she had s at someone, the roommate, mm. that cared about her. But now she has nobody that cares about her. The people that made her what she is, yeah, they care about her, but only as long as she does what they tell her to do. You know, so yeah. now she has nobody. That's scary to me, you know. I think that's the the ultimate horror of the, of the film is that, um, like, like we talked about, just how far you would go for that. Even in her job, the, well, I forget what it's called, something taters, her waitressing job, the her boss, it seemed like he kind of cared for her a little bit, you know, some sense. And also I think about that, how they put... You know, when, when he's, like, looking at her when she walks away, you know, doing, you know, harassing her in those ways. And then they pan the camera over, and then there's, like, another worker there just watching him. Uh, I thought that was so great. I thought that was genius. And, um, but at the same time, like, if they weren't there, like, what would happen? You know? Mm -hmm. he, could, he would just continue on and go further and further. I don't know if that was intentional like that, you know, but I feel like they were there, they were put there, you know, saying like, oh, someone's watching you, you know, type of thing. Does this, um, or when she starts to undergo her change, when she's rotting, is it a metaphor for uh, like body dysmorphia, do you think at all? Or did you think about it in that way? No, I think it's a metaphor for what someone goes through mentally. Mm hmm when something happens to them, you know, uh, someone takes advantage of them mm -hmm. and you have to continue on your life. But on the outside, uh, you just pretend like everything's fine. But on the inside, like, I feel like your mind is really, it's the one that's taking the toll, you know? So I feel like what goes inside a person's mind, that's kind of what is shown on the outside with her body you know mm -hmm. um you i you know women can feel like they're literally dying every day inside because of what's happened to them you know so i feel like that's that's what it's trying to say uh you literally your soul is taken away you know and um you're you feel like you're left with nothing so no, I don't think it's her body <laughs> dysmorphia. I think she does have body dysmorphia. Uh, at the beginning, the opening scene, it's her like trying to like feel her body and like seeing how it looks and all that. Um, I'm pretty sure she has some issues with that in the film. They don't really get into that though. Uh, what was your? What, where do you think her character is gonna go at the end of this? As far as, like, will she just continue working or is she not done killing? Yeah, I think she, I think she would continue on doing whatever, you know, Astraeus wants her to do. And it was so easy for her to kill off that roommate. I feel like it would just get easier and easier for her. She gets what she wants. She gets the fame. Also, that kill, I just have to shout out this kill with the... Uh, the friend and the dumbbell that wait. Oh, she yeah. fucking waits for her yeah. to wake up. Yeah, so it's more personal. Dude. <laughs> you would think that uh, that was pretty gnarly. You would think that the other kill would be more personal. The one the girl that always fucking Mess has some her. some shit to say about whatever she's doing. But again, that uh, that friend or so called friend was jealous. Yeah. And was um, projecting, you know, because she was upset because all of a sudden Sarah's getting all of this attention and is has jumped like, you know, 
so many steps ahead of everybody in their circle that then she doesn't know what to do except for to take jabs and that's what you know does her in in the end because she gets brutalized and then she's still alive and 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 would have gotten away if she would have just played dead but she tries to claw away and then gets suffocated with the back which is very intimate too that's yeah the whole the whole scenes all of those scenes inside that house uh i i wonder how that even i'm pretty sure they had fucking fun doing that like the friend that comes out to use the restroom and he's all what's it <laughs> like completely not aware of what's going on or how she just lurks sarah lurks in the shadows so they can't see that she's all fucked up and be alarmed and that's how she lures even the 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 director who shows her the probably besides the roommate the most compassion out of everyone where he's like hey you know where everybody's concerned about you we can get you i help. don't know he's a man i didn't trust him <laughs> you like yeah. you kind of want to trust him but then but then you're like he's a man i don't know well because he offers her right in the middle of the film he offers sarah a part he's like don't worry about astraeus like you can be in my movie and then it that kind of falls through because he picks that other girl as the lead instead of her, right? Which means she feels she ends up feeling betrayed or something like that. Yeah, but I don't know. I had I had I thought that if she did go along with his film, mm -hmm. he would still keep her as the leading role in his little film. Mm -hmm. Because he was working her so much. Like, why would he be working her when he was getting it from the other girl? So, like, to me, I'm thinking, oh, well, did he really have a genuine interest in just having her act in his film, you know? Mm -hmm. Or also, did he just want, like, more attention from her? Because that's what it seemed like. Like, she didn't want anything to do with any anybody. Mm -hmm. And people were just, like, googly eyes over her. And then that's when the other girl would always step in and be like, oh, sorry, I took the part from you or whatever, you know. Or, or when she has the, she gets, Sarah gets all dolled up with that, was it like a red dress or something? And then she's all, that's a bit much, don't you think? Like, no, like, I'll show you a bit much. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, I kind of want to trust that guy, but then I don't know. Well, we can't trust him now because he got stabbed. Oh, yeah, he got. <laughs> <laughs> um, they make Sarah so good at, like you said, like lurking around the shadows and stuff because that's what that's really what she does, anyways. Like she's just always observing and on the sidelines. What would you rate this? Mm, I would give it a solid seven and a half, what? almost eight. Wow, seven and a half. That's lower than I would have thought, but yeah. I could respect it. Ryan? I, I'd give it like an 8. The kills were really good. <laughs> I think the only reason why I would give it an 8 is just because, like you said in your opening, it's it's not for everybody because it's a super slow burn. But when you get to the third act, it's worth it. But yeah, no, that that first, like, I would say maybe, what is it? It's like an, it's like an hour and 30 minutes, something like that. At first, maybe hour and... Out, like it's you got to stick it stick through it but yeah. other than that, i think it's great i think you have to have patience for it and it has so many it ha that like the social commentary like there's a lot that going on you know um so I, if you don't have patience for that i feel like you're not gonna get it you're not gonna get the film i think that's why the kills are so um the payoff is so good because the, because of that, that that slow burn. Did you guys get the uh, the kind of Greek mythology that they were doing with the kind of the ritual that they do at the end when they bring her back and then um, them being called Astraeus uh, pictures? So in the mythology, Astraeus uh, translates to starry, and that's why the film is called Starry Eyes. And I thought that was really interesting. What about you? Would you? What would you? What would you give it? Uh, me. Um, if we're going one to ten, I would probably say an eight and a half. Okay, okay. This is a uh, this is this is the this is the kind of stuff that I love, man. The the hidden gems, 
Uh, next week is technically the last Friday of October, which means that if everything goes to plan, Chris Pollock will be back on the show, and we will be talking about Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark. Oh, it's going to be Vic uh, Admiral Atlas's birthday. Oh, yeah. On the 21st, which is when I plan on releasing the show. So happy birthday to happy Admiral. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Vic. Hello, Libra. Damn. You just Happy made birthday. It. He doesn't look a day over 21. <laughs> You'll appreciate that. John I'm Goodman. Totally, to- totally not kidding about that, Atlas. <laughs> He does look young. He does look young. And he do be looking like the brown John Goodman. You, every time you say that, now I fucking, <laughs> that's all I think about when I see him. <laughs> With that being said, uh, thank you, Emma, for joining us this week. I hope you had a decent time on the show. Mm-hmm. Hearing us babble about random stuff. No, hearing me babble about this film. <laughs> I feel like I... I really could go on more about the film. But it's interesting to take, to have other takes can tell you that you're wrong about. (laughs) This wouldn't be the first and it won't be the last. Also, thank you to Ryan for making time for us and the show, of course. Always appreciate it. I'll pat myself on the back for that one. Yes. Thank you, Ryan. You know what? You're so welcome. I'm sure you meant that with. Tons of love and joy. I did. I actually really did this time. <laughs> <laughs> if you are stumbling upon this podcast and don't know what we do, we operate out of San Diego, California, and are available on most major podcast platforms, including Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, Sodes, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, you name it, we're on there. So check us out, subscribe to the show, give us a five-star rating, maybe a little nice review if you have an extra couple seconds. Um, It helps us keep creating content for everyone out there. So yeah, thank you to all the listeners. And until next week, we bring you a breakdown of Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark. Go watch Starry Eyes. On Pluto TV, that's right. For free. (laughs) Yeah, so with that being said, this is Emma Duenas, Ryan Jimenez, and Wesley Swanson signing off saying good fight and good night. <laughs>